Hi everyone, I'm so happy that you're here to join me for the Way of the Animal podcast. So Alistair has today's podcast topic for us. Yeah, so I was listening to a Joe Rogan podcast just on my way home from work there and they started talking a bit about animal intelligence and there was a few differing opinions and I thought it might be an interesting thing to talk about. Excellent. You want to start? I do want to start, but also it strikes me that you kind of need to define what you call intelligence. It's exactly why I thought, like, what is intelligence? Um, is it problem solving? Well, it, it's, you know, for me, sort of some of the thoughts that I had when you spoke about the topic and then we did a few things before we started to record was, um, uh, you know, the definition of an intelligence or what do we define as intelligence? And then that sort of feeling that I get that humans think they're superior because they're intelligent. And I'm using quotations there. Yeah. And, um, you know, I always think sometimes that in our intelligence, we lose the plot of life and what it's about. It's a so, definite thing. You know, so it's... Um, it's There's a whole can of worms we can open there uh, about different things. There really is. And the thing that I keep thinking about, and I wish I could remember, it probably was another Joe Rogan podcast or something, but I listened to someone and they were talking about it and they said the trouble with gauging intelligence in other animals, and I think they might have been talking about dolphins in this one, is that we tend to gauge intelligence against us. So... We write all these books, do all this art, construction, computers, electronics. Aren't we intelligence? We go to space. But, like, that's one type of intelligence, you know, and like I said, I think they were talking about dolphins. Dolphins is a different type of intelligence. They know they've got language. They know they've got dialects. They've got social structure. It's... Yeah, and, and, and also, like, we don't know the depths of what other animals... Yeah know, yep. feel, sense, communicate. We don't know the depths of... I mean, we're only just getting to know the depths of how trees communicate with each other. There you go. You yeah. know, plant intelligence. Plant intelligence, you know, so beyond the animal kingdom, going into the plant kingdom. And I think uh, in our intelligence, we don't actually know that much about other animals, plants, things on this, this planet. This really screwing off the topic, but it's um, on a tangent... The plant intelligent thing, I I see very much that, like everything goes in cycles. Mm -hmm. So weather goes in cycles, like everything goes in cycles. So I see there's like an intelligence or connection or understanding of the natural world, however you want to put it, cycle that we're going through. If you think back, you know, a few thousand years or less, that when people were living more in tune with nature... Um, and you're we're less intelligent. Less intelligent <laughs> and the shamans and the yep. the spirits of the forest and all that sort of idea. They were more in tune and understood the rhythms and interconnectedness mm -hmm. of nature than we do now. However, we're in a bit of a return in the cycle to people are starting to mm -hmm. turn back towards understanding yep. and seeing. And wanting to. Yes. It's like people are wanting to create that connection again. The, the connection is still there, but recreate it, you know, just yeah. sort of get back to it. That's it's it. like in all our intelligence, we've lost that sort of connection side of us to nature in the same yeah. way. Um, and, and I totally agree. And it, it is really interesting. And it, what came up there for me was, you know, under, understanding the cyclical nature of things and... Um, you know, like all the old wives' tales, like we have the rowanberry tree. So when it's really heavy in fruit, we it's the warning of a more difficult winter because yep. the tree is, um, I mean, this was what it was described as, the tree, you know, the tree is putting out a lot of fruit because it thinks it might not survive the winter or whatever. I don't know. It, it It's sort of, or it's trying to feed the, the birds more. I don't know. We, we don't actually know, yep. but definitely... 
you know, it just made me think of the, we're, we're in the, the plants just now, but it made me think of the trees here where we've had a couple of years of drought. And um, I do the photo journal I've spoke about every year. And I noticed that last year the trees just went, yeah, we're done very early on and lost, you know, autumn came early yes. last year. And this year it was two weeks before it was even looking like it did last year yeah, uh, you know yeah. that it, so it's just yeah that that connection but yeah back to it the intel what is intelligence and it's because yeah i don't know what you call oh, it that was the other thought i forgot about it um i don't know you know i don't always believe things in the internet but there was um some sort of map that could depict birds movements Mm -hmm. i don't know how they're doing this i don't even know if it's true so it could be nonsense but when the first hurricane hit you know towards florida and that the the the, the helene Helene. yes i think so i don't know how to pronounce it because it's got an e in the end oh is it helena helena helene hurricane that one that one (laughs) not milton which is the second one um i happened to see on the internet a uh, map and all the birds uh, moving away from its path. That seems fairly yeah. obvious. But they, yet, you know, all the humans and all their intelligence... Didn't move? ...stay, you know, and it's just, it's interesting, um, you know. That's quite an extreme example. And it's things like, I mean, if you're looking at stuff like that, Pompeii, mm. the only animals found in Pompeii were restrained. So Every, everything else knew to leave the volcano erupting. Yeah. So I, I well, it's hailing outside. Um, yeah, it's just um, part of the intelligence side of it. Mm-hmm. And you're laughing because I'm doing the squirrel thing. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Part of the intelligence things for me, because I am very much wanting, like you were saying, people are wanting to get back connected with nature and and I've always felt that connection is um having that oh I've lost my train of thought <laughs> love it <laughs> definitely got squirreled there yeah totally um, did. that having that connection and having that way to um like for me it shows great intelligence that animals still listen to their natural instincts and their intuition and their feelings and their um rememberings about what's gone before and what comes you know and what they're yeah. feeling from nature mm-hmm. to keep themselves safe and i think that um and sometimes in some of our intelligence we ignore those niggling little feelings and that's how we end up in trouble you know i agree i feel like that's more aware but it's intelligence to be able to Def- connect, keep it definitely because i don't think it's intelligent to be because we have that thing where in our so for intelligence for me it feels a lot like it's in the thinking mind the brain you know Mm -hmm. and that thought of that um if we are so clever that we have forgotten to listen to the more important part of ourselves the part that keeps us safe yeah then are we that intelligent (laughs) well that's it and I mean, for me, I think intelligence, I think, comes a lot to problem solving and creativity. That's how I think of intelligence. Oh, I see a lot of that with the animals. Well, that's it. And you see so much of it. But I think people, and I could be wrong, but my opinion of the person that was on the Joe Rogan podcast was that they probably didn't have a lot of experience with animals because they were talking specifically about dogs at one point. And sort of talking about a lack of intelligence um, and dogs not understanding things. And it just, it hit me that I don't think you have spent enough time watching Mm. dogs and understanding dogs because they are intelligent. Mm. They do, and there's varying levels of intelligence in dogs, um, but from one dog to another, much like people. Um, But they are very intelligent and they're very domestic, heavily domesticated, but they can problem solve, they can learn, you know, they can be creative. 
Yeah, we see it a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and we spoke about before where you don't break the spirit of the dog, you know, you yeah. allow them to express and be who they are. That's when you see all those little things like, how did they figure? That's so cool. They wanted this to happen. And I'll say they do it in a way that you'd not expect because they don't think in the same way we do. Yeah. But they do some really cool stuff. You're like, they fig- you know, they figured that out. Yep. And that's, so I find that interesting, that figuring things out. And we were talking about this before when I suggested the topic, that they also talked about gorillas doing sign language. And they've taught a whole bunch of gorillas sign language and you can sign to them and they'll reply to you. And I, like the person talking, don't know enough about it. But he thought, and I can understand why I would think it, is that you sign to them and they reply to you. And it's very much more than like you've taught them responses to inputs. So that's learning something, but I don't know if it, true intelligence and grasping the concept even if the concept is simply I put my hands like this for food I put my hands like this for something else you know, mm. I don't know but oh it made me think of um I don't know if people have seen it um it's a bunny the dog the with dog with the her buttons buttons yeah. and you know they they have a whole load of buttons with words on and they've obviously slowly introduced different words and sort of allow the dog to understand in whatever way the dog does Mm -hmm. the words and what they mean. And now the dog will have sort of conversations as it were using the buttons. Mm -hmm. But um, what was really, I think it's like talking to your subconscious. What was really interesting, because we talked about this with the subconscious, subconscious literal, I feel like dogs are too. They're Mm -hmm. very much like, it's, it's this, this, this. But it's, I've seen quite a few different animals now, a few different dogs, sorry, mainly, do, using these um, buttons with the words on it. And the ones that really interest me are the ones where the dog is trying to describe something with the limited vocabulary that it's been given. Mm-hmm. And how interesting it is that it string, how it strings the words together to make it yeah. something that... And, and, you know, and quite often their guardians struggle to understand what they mean for a bit. And then when they get it, it's like, wow, that's really amazing that the dog has... Tried to communicate. Yeah, co- tried to communicate out with the boundaries of, I need out, you know. Yeah, I, I need, need out, I, I need, want food, yeah. I want pet. Yeah, yeah, like... Yeah, so that's the... I've seen Bunny the dog. Yeah. And I've seen people critiquing bunny the dog and i've seen some you know behaviorists biologists discuss it and their argument is that it's just a dog learning tricks and it and it comes back to that the dog knows if i do this my owner gives me food if i do and then they argue that the dog doesn't understand what it's doing it's just but they don't use food as a reward for using the buttons yeah or attention or reward of some action that's interesting because like people have watched that and come to that conclusion is absolutely fascinating if you watch the videos of them like you can i can understand where they're coming from like it makes sense what they're saying but like this like the dog will come a dog will call like watching them think so they will do a little bit and then the owner will kind of reply in what way is, mm-hmm. is sort of whatever. And the dog will go away and you can see it sort of having a thought from him and then tries in a different way yeah. to communicate. So like that's that's beyond that. And that, yeah, it's very interesting. But that's people who don't understand, connect and read animals. Yes. That's my feeling with that. You know, um, my feeling with some of the scientific stuff is if scientific people are studying animals and they don't have that true connection with animals, yeah, they are coming to it from a very pragmatic, which is great point of view. Yeah. But at that stage, they don't read or feel what the animal is going through when it's doing things. Yeah. Therefore they are missing 50%. I would say more of what is going on. Yes, definitely. Um, and, and it's great. Cause I know they're trying to do it in a way where it is not, um, it can't be debated. So it has to be through a thinking yeah. mind. But you, uh, for me, like you can't approach animals through a thinking mind. No, not at all. And uh, Sorry, carry on. And Well, what I was going to say is it's the difficult thing though because 
all my examples that I can think of of impressive animal intelligence are anecdotal. It's like I saw this and interpreted it like this. Yes, yeah. And it's and then they they talk about that anthropomorphizing um, animals, yeah. you know, and oh, you're humanizing them. It's like, well, we're animals. Am I humanizing them or am I animalizing them? Yeah. Am I just allowing them to be more than what you think they are? Yeah, I, I think it depends, and that can go either way. Because I've equally I've heard people comment on behaviors of animals in a very human centric way Mm -hmm. and it's not exactly but it's kind of like oh well you know this this animal is very concerned about the state of the economy (laughs) and he doesn't care about that yeah okay you know so so i do see i've seen not to that extent but it's that sort of thing (laughs) it it's like no, 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 no. Yeah. There's no way the animal even has a concept for this. Like, I I, I understand that is anthropomorphizing them, and that's not it. But then going back to one of our previous podcasts, we were putting cattle through the cattle handling system. I watched a cow. Person gate, person gate, yeah. person gate, person open gate, person open gate, person open gate. And the cow was trying to communicate to that person yeah. to open the gate so it could go through the system. Yeah. Now, the person didn't understand it, but the cow was communicating mm-hmm. it. And that is a level of intelligence. That is mm-hmm. it finding itself in a situation, seeing how to get out, knowing it can't do it on its own, that it needs the person mm-hmm. to facilitate it. And then being like, you need to do this. Now, it's like all the wild animals that end up trapped or injured or... And go to people for out, help. And they go to people for help. Or they are calm. Like, usually they'd be crazy, but they're calm while the people help because... They know they need the help. You know, yep. they figured out that humans can help them, yep. you know. Um, for me, that's pretty damn intelligence to put your wildness to the side and just be like, just help me, you know. Yeah. Um, And, you know, to go even deeper with a lot of what I believe with the animals, like with our own animals that are in our lives, our live animals we come across in our lives, is... I think every animal we come across or we live with, we have, we see, we meet, um, is for a reason. And I think that they have things to show us Mm -hmm. about ourselves. And I think there's a greater intelligence in life beyond what we believe. And that's just my belief. Um, I mean, you don't even have to go that deep when we were talking about, um, our dogs and what they've taught us Mm -hmm. like whether it was intentional that we got that dog at that time or not whatever they were there at that time and i've learned lessons from my animals yes and whether you you know you need to believe whatever it's more important to understand that they can guide us just by reflecting how we're feeling back at us just by behaving in a way and showing us how we behave back you know just by being more challenging and getting us to move beyond what we thought we knew and what we thought we had to do to reach solutions with our animals. I think so. I, I completely agree with you. You know, I think that, you know, you were talking about people commenting on videos and I, I, I cannot stand all the reels and the shorts and things like that where it's animal. Oh, this dog is happy that this and you know, I'm looking at it, and you you can go right into it if you go into the kids' ones with animals, um, is, you know, I can feel all that animal's feeling, and it is not happy. You know, the, the licking of the lips and thinking that that's just they're hu- saying they're hungry. You know, yeah. no, licking the lips is a sign that they are stressed and they're nervous, and the licking of the lips is a, is a calming measure. They're trying to calm themselves and calm themselves. You know, it's just like people miss a lot of... Um, subtle behaviors. Yes. So, and and in and in that we're really not intelligent. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Like the people struggle to. I mean, to I miss. Read. I miss them too. Oh yeah, everyone I mean, like, does. Sometimes I miss them too, but um, yeah, those videos were the commentary. That's the digital commentary. Yeah, I know what you Just, mean. Just ah. Oh. <laughs> It just it's like it so upsets me that we're this far advanced as a 
humanity, as a society, as everything, and we still are looking at animals and thinking, it's wagging its tail, it's happy, you know? Yeah. Oh, my God, why are we still at this? Why is this still a thing? <laughs> How has this not changed? You know? <laughs> You can tell it's one of those things that really gets my go. I, I can, yeah. <laughs> just, oh. <laughs> because it's just like, this is how we get into difficult situations. This is why how we end up with poor dogs biting people because they're giving all these early warning signs that they're uncomfortable. Yeah. And people don't aren't prepared to even connect and listen and understand. Yeah. And then there's the whole, um, going into the whole, you know, Inhibiting the growl, you know. Yes. Don't growl. Yeah. The growl is a warning that the dog is struggling already. Yes. So. It's a communication. Anyway, that's like, that's getting, all, it's like going a different yeah, version. Yeah, that's more into reading the well, behavior. Well, it's more into the fact that we think we're more intelligent than animals. And, you know. We can't understand We them. can't understand them. So who's more intelligent? Because they understand us. They read us. They look at our left eye. They read how we're feeling. They yeah. read how we are. They can connect and communicate with us. And here we are just blundering around in the dark, not having a clue, yet we're the most intelligent species on the planet. That's it. And that's the that's the thing I think that's hard to put a frame around is what is intelligence. Mm -hmm. Because like you say, the communications, I remember something that always impressed me. Again, it was a dolphin one. But it was, you know, dolphins that um and your feelings on this can be either way or whatever they're in captivity that do tricks for sea life centers and things like that and they were talking about this pair of dolphins and one of the commands they had for them was go and make something up and the dolphins would swim underwater sit with each other for a little bit communicating and then they would string together a series of jumps twists spins whatever that they'd never done before but did it in synchronous with each other, and they, you know they yeah. they made their own display, however they wanted to do it, and that's intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's understanding the brief, understanding the ability, like, and that's then working something it. together. Yeah. And so, there's yeah. some humans that struggle with that concept. Yep. <laughs> I have to say that because of that sort of thing freaks me out my mind gets in the way of me actually being able to you know it's like improv and that yeah, sort of thing it. is but is, then you see hard. working dogs working livestock and especially in the situations we've been in over the years quite often your dog will be on its own in a situation that it has to weigh options assess what's the best option to do figure it out figure it out they're not dealing with a station you know they're dealing with another animal that's going to behave in different ways depending on what they do there's a and whole then, bunch of variables. and then you're all human that does random things and complains and you're all that human you're... that's going to be complaining at you while you're trying to figure this thing out <laughs> and you've got to get it back over to there and do the, like there's a whole bunch of problem solving that they work out how to do that yeah to me that's massive intelligence because yeah. i know people that can't work that one out yeah this is it. So <laughs> I love how basically we both, we we think humans aren't as intelligent as they, they think they are certainly, and that we we have no place judging intelligence animals of intelligence. Animals. Yeah, that's it. It's it's that thing. If you watch and you look, there's a lot of intelligence there. It's they're not building computers, but there's a lot of intelligence doing, there. It's been interesting. It's like I feel like they're doing so much more for the planet than we are yeah I, the funny thing with the building computers it always makes me think when you see any of these you know ancient egyptian things lost civilizations this lost advanced civilization everyone thinks well they had flying cars and it's like well no they were advanced for their time period yeah. you know so animal intelligence is suited to them yeah. not to our skewed belief of yeah. intelligence a good it's an topic. interesting yeah. thing and just I mean, you, like you to could... be more aware of what they're saying and watch the intelligences well, so i think it's like i think uh humanity underestimates animals um and plant life everything you just need to be more aware and i think that yeah it's um we need to get off of our high horse 
yeah. of thinking that we're superior because we've done this, this and this. And understanding that in doing this, this and this, we're totally wrecking something that we are truly connected to, which is our own planet we live on. Well, and the so animals unaware of it. And the plants, because we're too busy being intelligent. Yep. To really understand. Yes, because a big part of their intelligence impact. is being aware. Yeah. Good talk. Yeah.